So we have seen how to use a divide and conquer strategy to implement a sorting algorithm called merge sort. So now we want to analyze whether merge sort actually behaves better than our order n squared intuitive sorts like insertion sort and selection sort. So in order to analyze merge sort, we first need to look at the merge operation itself. So remember that when we merge two sorted lists, what we do is we take both lists side by side and we keep copying the smaller of the two elements at the head of each list into the final list C. So this was the code that we wrote last time. So basically we have a list A which runs from 0 to M minus 1 and we have another list B which runs from 0 to N minus 1 and we produce the output in a third list C which has indices from 0 to m plus n minus 1. Right? So what we do is we, we start by putting an index i, j into these two lists and index k into the list c and we compare these two values and we take the smaller of the two values and move it here and then we move this and then we keep moving these two indices and all the while we keep moving k. So the question is how long does this take? So in each iteration, notice that we add one element to C, right? But the size of C is exactly m plus n because there are m elements in A and there are n elements in B and each of them will eventually make it to C. So there are m plus n elements, right? And in each iteration of this loop, the loop that we had before, right? So in each iteration of this loop, one element gets added to C either in, in this if or in this if k is incremented, right? So this list, as you can see, will make k will make progress in every iteration. So there is a bound of m plus n steps for this loop. And in the loop, we will, if you count very carefully, we have a comparison, we may have one more comparison, we have an assignment and so on. But you can check that there are no more than seven steps involved. So some constant number of steps regardless of which branch we take in this, right? So we have m plus n iterations, each of which has some constant number of steps. So we have overall order m plus n steps. But m plus n is of course bounded by 2 times the maximum of m plus n. So we can just say that this thing takes order of maximum m plus n. If m is roughly the same as n, which will typically be the case in merge sort because we split it in half, so the 2 will differ by at most 1 in terms of length, then we find that merging is a linear time operation. So if we want to merge two lists, it takes time proportional to the length of the two lists together. So now coming to merge sort itself, what we want to do is we want to take a list of size n, right? And we want to split it into two lists of size n by 2, right? And then we sort these separately and then we merge. So in order to do this, it's very clear that if we look at Tn as the time taken by merge sort on an input of size n, then this requires us to sort two lists of size n by 2. And then as we have seen, it takes order n time in order to merge them. Now, in order to do, compute this t of n explicitly, we will assume that n is a power of 2. Now, it turns out that merge sort does not in any way require n to be a power of 2, not even an even number. If it is not even, then when we split into two parts, they will not be equal because we cannot split an odd number into two equal parts. But it doesn't matter. The algorithm will still work correctly. This assumption that n is 2 to the k is only a simplification for us to be able to come up with a nice calculation. So we have two problems of size n by 2, 2 times t of n by 2, and then we have a merge of n. So how do we solve something like this? Of course, we also have a base case which says that when we have only one element, it takes no, no time except to just check that you have only one element. So t of 1 is 1. Right? So if you have a solution, an, uh, an expression like this, two recurrences like this, then how do we solve them? Right? So the basic idea is to keep the simplest way to do it, of course, you can come up with more sophisticated ways which we will not go into right now. But one simple way is to just keep expanding using the same analysis, the same expression until you come down to the base case. So we start with the base case t1 equal to 1 and the general case tn is 2 times t of n by 2 plus n. So now what we can do is we can use the same equation to expand t of n by 2. Right? So we expand t of n by 2 then we find that t of n by 2 becomes 2 times t of n by 4 plus n by 2 because I take whatever is here divided by 2, so n by 2 by 2 is n by 4 and I take whatever is here and plug it in here, so n by 2 comes. Now if I 
expand this out carefully then this 2 and this 2 rather than write it as 4 I will write it as 2 squared I will also observe and this will be useful that this 4 is again 2 squared right and then this n by 2 is multiplied so this n by 2 is multiplied by 2 so I get 2 times n by 2 so that's n plus n so I get 2n okay so it's not an accident that I have 2 squared, 2 squared and 2n as we will see if you do one more step now if I take this expression t of n by 2 square and I apply the same rule to this right then this t of n by 2 squared expands out like this right it's n by 2 squared divided by 2 is n by 2 cubed so I get 2 times t n by 2 cubed plus n by 2 square now this and this will cancel right so I get 1 n here I already have 2 n so I get 3 n's and this 2, 2 into 2 square I will write as 2 cube right so I have gone from 2 square t n by 2 square plus 2 n to 2 cube t n by 2 cube plus 3 n so it's easy to verify that if you do this j times you will have 2 to the power j times t of n by 2 to the power j plus j n right so now when do we reach the base case we reach the base case when n by 2 to the power j goes to 1 okay. so when does this happen well n by 2 to the power j is equal to 1 it means that 2 to the power j is equal to n right so j is nothing but log of n to the base 2 right so we will always use log n in general to mean log of n to the base 2 unless otherwise specified so after log of n steps we end up with something which looks like this right it has 2 to the j t n by 2 to the j plus j n after log n steps j is log n so I have 2 to the log n then t of n by this so this is t of 1 now so this is just 1 so this multiplied by 1 and then I have j times n so j is log n so j is log n and n is n right so I have after doing this expansion log n times I end up with 2 to the log n plus log n times n 2 to the log n by definition is just n right? because that's the definition of log that is the exponent of 2 which gives you n so this is n and I have this gives you n log n and we know from general things that n is big O of n log n so this is bounded by 2 times n log n so we can say that overall merge sort takes times own n log n right so we have achieved a significant improvement because remember that so far both insertion sort and selection sort were o n square and we have come down from o n square to o n log n by using this divide and conquer strategy so why is this a big deal we saw right at the beginning that o n log n is much more efficient than o n square okay if we assume as we have said that a reasonably a uh, standard desktop machine can do 10 to the 8 operations per second then the size of the feasible input of what we can sort with a sorting algorithm goes from 10,000 for an n square algorithm to 10 million or 1 crore for an n log n algorithm so therefore if we really have to sort large volumes of data n log n makes it feasible for us to do so in a reasonable amount of time whereas n squared would take years as we saw before So before we conclude, there are some nice things to notice. So this merge operation which we have used in merge sort is actually a very useful operation on any sorted list. Right? So one thing that we do in merge is that we actually combine the list without lo losing anything. So if we merge two lists such as say 1, 2, 4 and 2, 3, 6, then in our final thing we will have two copies of 2 okay? because there are two copies and then 3, 4, 6. So sometimes we, we may want to not have this, we may want to keep only one copy, we might want to treat these as sets, so if I take this as a set 1, 2, 4 and the set 2, 3, 6, then the resulting union of the two sets is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 with only one copy of 2. Well we can easily do this in our uh, merge procedure by just saying that when I find, so earlier we had two cases, we had AI less than or equal to BJ and then we had ai greater than bj right so in the first case we copied from ai in the second case we copied from bj and in either case we only incremented either i or j along with k in this case we say that if 
the two sides are equal we keep one copy of it in the final list but we skip over both these copies we increment all three pointers right so if we are at this position and this position right then in our output we will copy a two and then we will move this pointer to the right and this pointer to the right so i don't copy two twice right so this is one thing that we can do the other thing that we can do is to intersect two lists so if we again have 1 2 3 and maybe 2 3 6 right then maybe we want to make sure that we have in our output only 2 and 3 okay right? so now what we do is when we start looking at these two if they are not equal then obviously they are not in the intersection but which one should we leave well two could still be there because one is smaller so we move this pointer right so we if ai is smaller than bj we increment i now we say when ai and bj are the same we will as we did for union we will move the two out and we will merge we will move both pointers so now both pointers come to this position now again we will say that we have three and we will continue and then when we see the other way around if bj is smaller than ai we will increment j and not i right so the important thing to note is that merge is a very generic operation we can do what we did earlier which was to actually shuffle the two sorted lists into one big sorted list where no elements are lost or we can remove duplic duplicates while we are doing it, treat it as a set union operation. Or we can only keep the common parts which is a set intersection operation. Okay. So to check that you have understood this, maybe you should try out the following exercise. So supposing we want to do what is called list difference. So set difference is sometimes written like this. So if I take the set 1, 2, 3 and the set say 3, 4, 6 right? and I ask the set difference, it says whatever is in A but not in B. So the answer should be in this case 1 and then 2 but not 3 because 3 is there in both. Okay? So you can do the same thing for lists. So for example if I had the list 1, 2, 3 and the list 3, 4, 6 then I might want to keep the list only 1, 2. So just check whether you can adapt merge in the way we have done now for union and intersection in order to list difference. So merge sort though it is an order n log n sorting algorithm and therefore is significantly faster than insertion sort or selection sort, it does have some shortcomings. The main problem with merge sort is that it requires extra space. See when I take A and B and I merge it into C, it's almost impossible to do this without storing the merged array in a separate place. Because if I start merging in place, then the, the sorted order of A and B gets messed up or I have to keep shifting things and so the merge is no longer linear time. So if I want a linear time merge of A and B, this can only be achieved by using an external list of the size which is the sum of the two lists in order to store this. This means that if we are sorting large arrays, I'm also extra space is being used because I have to keep duplicating the space in order to do the merge operation. And of course the other thing about merge sort which is very difficult to overcome is that it is inherently recursive. I mean there is no way to actually easily make it iterative because we need to construct the sorted things and then merge them. So we need to store these recursive solutions at each point in order to combine them. Right? So the recursive call and return can be expensive also. So although merge sort is a very attractive sort in terms of its theoretical complexity, it is not sometimes used in practice because of these limitations and we will see how to overcome this in some other way. So the main reason we need extra space in merge sort is because of the merge operation. As we saw, in order to combine A and B into a list C in linear time, you need extra space. Now suppose, and this, the reason this happens is because we could have something like the left side could be say 2, 4, 6 and the right side could be say 1, 3, 5. And now we need to take things from both sides. So sometimes I need to take something from here, then I need to take something from here, then I need to take something from here and so on. Right? So though each of the two halves is sorted, there are elements from the left which must go to the right and there are elements from right that must go to the left. So now, if we could come up with a way to avoid doing this, so, so that everything in the red part is smaller than everything in the green part, then once I have sorted the red part and I have sorted the green part, then automatically everything in the red part stays to the left of everything in the green part. Right? So if I had had, instead of this, if I had had on the left, I had started with say 2, 1, 3 and on the right I had started with say, 6, 4, 5. And then I had locally sorted these things. So I had got 1, 2, 3 and then here I had got 4, 5, 6. Then after this, if I had guaranteed that this the split was such that everything on the left is smaller than everything on the right, after doing this divide and then 
solving the sub problems there is no combination of it there is no need to merge okay? so our next sorting algorithm will look at a strategy to implement this idea